Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. I am so excited to do this reading with you today. We are going to be focusing on love. We're going to be asking our angels, our guides, messages for love for us when it comes to our love relationships, our intimate love relationships, specifically when it comes to marriage and partnership. One of the reasons why I'm so inspired to do this specific reading for you today is because last night I went out and I celebrated someone's engagement. I went to her bridal shower party and it was so much fun. And actually these flowers are from the party. I knew right away that I wanted to come and share this energy with you guys immediately. So go ahead and grab a cup of coffee or hot tea or a glass of water. Myself, I'm drinking some ice water here and Allow yourself to be intuitively led to the message that is here meant for you now. If you want to choose one message, two messages or three messages, please allow yourself to indulge in these messages, these readings. I just ask that you don't force anything. Forcing things is never, never the way. It's never the vibe. But following your intuition and allowing your intuition to lead the way that that is energy that i can get down with so i'm going to go ahead and pause this reading in the meantime and i will link the timestamps down for you below just to give you a little quick disclaimer though this is pile number one this crystal right here please excuse any noise in the background i asked my boyfriend to be quiet and he decided i guess to shake some things around <laughs> This is pile number two, the shell. And this is pile number three, the rose quartz. All right, my loves, messages for your love life, especially in regards to marriage and long-term partnership. Okay, my darling babies, if you chose this crystal, this is going to be your message when it comes to love, relationships, marriage. This card definitely wants to jump out. This deck that I'm working with is, I forget the name of it. Wow, guys, I'm terrible with remembering the official names of decks, but I will link it down for you below. I got it off of Amazon. I was recommended to get this deck and I didn't wait didn't wait. All you got to do is say the word. <clears throat> okay, angels and guides from the highest lights of the universe, what are the messages here that you want to share with the, those who chose this pile when it comes to love, connection, marriage, and partnership? I am getting a sense of one more. Okay, here we go. Wow, that is more than one more. That's a whole lot, but we're gonna go with it. We're gonna flow with it. Queen of Swords, your Oracle cards. I'm gonna slide them over to the side here so that we could just focus on the tarot for now. We have Queen of Swords, the first card that wants to be shared. Five of Wands. Eight of Cups. High Priestess. She was reversed though. I'm going to allow her to stay reversed. Just allow her to speak her truth. We have Five of Pentacles here. This feels like it goes here. The Lover's card reversed. Feels like it goes here. Five of Cups reversed. Two of Wands. Strength card. And Temperance. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm immediately getting this energy of second guessing. I also just heard the word procrastinating. I don't know if this is your partner or if this is you or your future partner. It feels like someone is procrastinating. Like there's a delay when it comes to development in marriage, love, union, or in the relationship right now. For me, um, I feel like this is, if you chose this pile, you're waiting for something to happen. 
you're are you're waiting for a sign for something like send me a sign send me a, a sign that things are working out that things are coming together you're um Even, even two here with the Temperance card and the Strength card, these two cards showing up, they are heightening this energy of patience, like uh, trying to be deliberately patient, meaning like, I don't know if you're trying to help things to work out with your partnership or reasoning. I don't know if you're reasoning with some with an actual person or if you're reasoning with the universe. If you're single, it feels like you are trying to find reasons why there's a delay in partnership and union and marriage. If this is if you're waiting on a person, you're trying to I don't know, I'm almost getting a sense of you're trying to find a reason why this person would be delayed, why they're not making any moves, and I, I get this sense of not defeat, but like this feeling that the relationship feels like it's walking toward a defeated place. But the universe is almost calling that out and saying that it, it actually feels pretty hopeful. And I think that you're, you might actually see signs of hope for the relationship in the Oracle cards. And we will look into that. I do plan on doing an extended reading so we can look into what is causing this major delay within this relationship or within union. With I'm going to leave it pretty vast here in the sense of um i don't necessarily want to guess not that i feel like i'm guessing i don't want to um try to pinpoint if you're in a relationship or if you're single i'm gonna just say union so whether you're in a relationship or if you're moving towards union apply apply it where it fits but i just feel like you're waiting for signs about pro for progress within this union within this connection and from what i can see and what i can sense it almost feels like you're trying you're in order to remain hopeful for the future for this union and specific in connection with this union you're making like reason like you're reasoning you're kind of not making excuses but trying to explain it to yourself or understand it like you're trying to find the reasoning within this I do want to tell you that as I'm sitting here looking at these cards I wanted I really want to tell you that delays right now are beneficial believe it or not delays are going to be beneficial and we'll probably dive into that a little further in the extended why is there a delay where is this delay coming from I I want to kind of pull out some of these energies here we have five of cups reverse eight of cups upright these are energies that can, and even five of pentacles reversed, these are energies that showcase emotional tumultuous energy, energy that makes you feel depressed, sad, withdrawn, forlorn a little bit, but it's so wild because as as sad as these cards can be or disappointed as these cards can be, I, it's, I'm not even feeling called to focus on that energy as much as I am focusing on the hope that is that you have for this union even as i'm looking at this card here this skeleton person is lighting a match and there's something here that is adding f fuel to the fire here in a good way that is making you hopeful for the future or what it could become i think this is your reasoning i think this is why spirit keeps highlighting this energy of reasoning that word reasoning because even with queen of swords she 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 can either she can convince herself or others of why something is impactful or meaningful and i feel like this is what you're doing for yourself and it's it's um meaningful enough that others might be convinced right so what does this mean i don't feel like you're intentionally manipulating anyone or anything i just feel like you believe so strongly in this union or the future of the union that it's actually encouraging and enticing the counterpart to believe in it just as well i don't know if this is a current situation guys i have a new phone and i don't know how the heck to turn off the volume i pretty i turned everything i'm just gonna turn it off but i don't even know how to do that let's do this it's probably gonna signal the alarm oh there we go uh you guys know i'm not really a phone person believe it or not i i keep my phone on dnd more th often than anything else um it just allows me to focus on my work readings the apothecary etc etc anyway back to what I was, I was saying here there's something here i just feel like 
I, I keep getting this message that your hard work and your hope, your optimism is going to pay off. It's wild though, because the lover's card here is reversed in the near future. Felt very called to put it in the future. I love this card, by the way, too, because I don't know if you could see this, but it's masculine and feminine energy. They're holding onto a sacred heart. There's a lock there, but the key is right above their, right above the heart. And to me, this is showing that I can't, I'm gonna actually shuffle on this a little bit further. I feel like this is either two ways, when I'm asking for additional clarity, the, the um, most likely outcome, usually with the lover's card reversed, I get this, depending on the situation, it changes depending on the tarot reading, and I teach it a lot in Sacred Circle Tarot School, but um, depending on it, I depending on the situation and depending on the cards and the energy and the vibe, oftentimes with the lover's card, reverse it can create delays and obstacles when it comes to decision making when it in love and relationships and union wild because i actually see this as the hope to find the key to open the door so that this can happen and the fact that there is spirit is highlighting this the sense of loss that there is a key that's lost is almost mirroring the fact that the truth is, is that there's a lock and an opportunity here in the future. I hope that makes sense. Sometimes it's what we are looking at, but sometimes it's what we are looking for. And in this, in this reading, for you, if you chose this, even if you're feeling disappointed or frustrated with love or just wanting things to turn around in a positive way and doing all that you can, I there, it's just this overarching message here, this theme that keeps showing up that... There's reason for you to believe in this future. There's reason for you to believe that there's hope here and that things can turn around and that things are moving forward. I just, I do get a sense of empowerment here. Queen of Swords is, when we look at the tarot, oftentimes we don't look at her as a lover. I want you to kind of discard that mindset when it comes to the Queen of Swords. It's not that she's not a lover. It's not that she is always disappointed and frustrated with intimacy or deeper connection. It's just that the way that this feminine energy is showing up right now, she will find a way, right? She will find a solution to fix the problem. And the way that she understands that will help her to be successful is not to follow blindly her heart, but to apply some type of um, wisdom or intellect and apply it to the situation. And again, this is someone who is willing and capable of fixing, of fixing the circumstances in order to help this relationship to progress, to move forward, or for there to be healing to happen for union, you know? So I, having said that, eight of cups, five of wands reversed, five of cups reversed, five of pentacles reversed, two of wands upright, the lover's card reversed. These cards are showing me that despite any type of frustration, there's something good that I feel will come out of it. I would like to, me personally, when I do the extended, I'm going to light the match and light up the darkness of what is creating the obstacle, the barrier here, especially with the Two of Wands. Sure, this card signifies choices, decisions, which way do we go, where, what, but for me, I see this as looking. I feel like this is the Queen of Swords looking for this missing key, and I feel this is Spirit's way, Temperance card, the Strength card, of encouraging you to continue to look, and of encouraging you to be patient and not to rush the process because if you could, I feel like you would find the solution if it was possible. I think you would have already found it. But I, I think that there's some things, I don't know why I'm getting an image of like leaves, like wind blowing and then the le it blowing the leaves and then you see the key underneath a pile of leaves. There's something here that I think will, when you light the match, you can see. You can see where things were once hidden. I don't feel like this is a negative thing. I feel like this is very positive. And that's wild for me to kind of say that, especially with the eight of, with such um, 
difficult cards, eight of cups, emotionally difficult, difficult cards, I should say. Eight of cups, five of cups reverse, five of pentacles reverse. These, these, these um, cards can signify uh, despair, but I just feel like Spirit is showing that when you feel like there's something that's missing here or lost or you're looking for something, it's because it's supposed to be found. And that's what we're going to dive into in the extended. Now, before we look at your Oracle cards, because we're not done with your reading, I really want to look into the potential here for the future for you. Whoa, this card wants to jump out. Oh my goodness, Six of Cups. Wow, this is finding what was lost. This is actually finding what was lost. This is the potential. This is reunion. Some of you might have been disconnected. Wow, Ten of Swords. This is after a dramatic ending or even you believing or believing. <laughs> That's not even a word. The energy reflecting this idea that it logically looks like things are over, but the future is there's actually reconciliation and reconnection that wants to that is brewing here. And I feel like if we just stayed with our logic and reasoning from an from a more negative perspective, your relationship or union might look like, wow, this doesn't logically or realistically look like this can happen with all that's here. But I, with the Temperance card and the Strength card, it's like, actually, there's something here that will be found. There's something here that will be rediscovered. There's a reconnection here, a rekindling that is about to spark up. Some of you guys, you might have actually conjured this in. You might not have had closure or you might not have had um, a fair, sh fair share like of this relationship or a fair shake of this relationship. And... This is returning back to that. Five of Pentacles reverse even. Five of Cups reverse. Eight of Cups. It's the card of walking away. It seems like you're walking away. But there's something here that as soon as you are choosing to like walk to look or walk away from something, it, it almost like turns you back and then you end up looking again for this connection. Now, I want to say that I'm hearing this very clearly that some of you guys are, if this is a situation with your ex, or a partner, like a, a partnership that is still, you might still feel wounded by or wounded from. I actually feel that this is spirit's way. If you are completely, especially with the Eight of Cups here, if you're completely done and the Ten of Swords with this connection and there's no hope for reconciliation, this is spirit's way of saying for your love life, for you to... Go to those feelings, those that, tr that treasure trust of feelings that you have kind of buried or that you left in the bottom of the ocean that you're just like, once I threw it overboard, I never want to, you know, pull it back up. They're almost asking you to spend some time with those feelings and process them, process them. Is that the right? I don't know why I'm questioning myself so much with my words lately, but um, because they don't want you to be blocking love connections in the near future, especially if you're not mourning or processing your emotions and dealing with them, coming coming to terms with them and laying them to rest. But if those of you guys who might be considering that reconciliation might be a real possibility for you, I definitely am seeing this in your cards. Now let's go ahead and look. We have Six of Wands. Yeah, this is the card of success. We have the Hierophant. And the Seven of Pentacles. Do you see how he's kind of counting? I'm. This is my first time seeing this deck, really. He's kind of counting the coins here, or counting the skulls on the abacus. It's like an abacus. I can't believe I remember that word. Something. I don't want to say that something here feels strategic. I feel like it's only a matter of time. Some of you guys really, honestly, you conjured this up and your magic worked. If you are thinking about an ex or a past partnership, if you were to light a candle for reconciliation, this would work. <laughs> because I genuinely feel like this person kind of wants to reconnect to. And by kind of, I mean it's just... They, they, I think that they're processing or unpacking it in their own way. I do want to say that for those of you guys who are ending a relationship or you've already ended the relationship, you do have Six of Wands here. 
and this skull skeleton is holding a scythe, the scythe, scythe, the blade, the Grim Reaper blade. It's true that you've successfully ended this connection and you're you've laid you're you've laid to rest um, a toxic pattern or process in your life, but do please do the seven of pentacles energy and start to take, um, take inventory of your life and the relate, the positives. I know that this might be difficult, but the positives that the relationship brought into your life, what did you learn about yourself, about what you want? Try to look at that. What are some things that you don't want to repeat? Some red flags that you saw and start to process them internal, not internalize them, but make them make sense for your life. Ask for clarity to make it make sense so that this isn't something that moving forward, you find yourself repeating. That's the message for your love life. All right, my loves, I think that it's appropriate now for us to look into your oracle cards. The first cards that were chosen for you are, wow, Wizard of the Woods, Focus, and Wild Rose Fairy, Love. So that in itself is pretty telling. It's also connecting me to the Queen of Swords that we saw. Remember, she's kind of like the center of this reading. I'm almost seeing you embodying the energy of the Queen of Swords. Again, if we stayed superficial with tarot, we would think that the Queen of Swords is not a place that is that we want to be because we feel like she's so disconnected from her heart. That's not true. She's connected to her heart. She's very connected to the, her heart. In fact, imagine how strong she has to be and how and how powerful she is that she doesn't exclusively allow her heart to lead the way or energy to lead the way. She's able to reason and find to focus and to find a solution, especially when it comes to the realms of love. That is something that I, that is to be very proud of, in my opinion. I'm also hearing about, for some of you guys might have learned how to master boundaries. And Spirit just really loves that for you. Next cards we have here, self-acceptance. Hardship. Interesting. So this is, again, why that Queen of Swords energy is so striking, because she's the one who doesn't melt in the face of hardship. She really has, she she has already done the math and knows that she will be successful as she carries forward because she's focused and she's determined. And that's the energy of the Queen of Swords. I think when it comes to self-acceptance, I want to read this to you. Nothing is more exhausting than endlessly working on yourself. When you offer your whole being fully to love, self-acceptance arises spont spontaneously. May I rest in our oneness, dear one. It's interesting because it's the our oneness, like may I rest in our oneness. Whatever your love life is looking like, whether you're in a partnership with your person or you're moving towards union, I really get a sense that when you are focusing on achieving your goal towards love, whatever that looks like, you you already have connected with that partnership. You've already helped that partnership move move through any hardship that you might be facing now. Um, this is kind of reminding me of how I was saying earlier that the Queen of Swords, because she believes so much in her reasoning and her logic, it almost energetically encourages and entices others to be the, believe the same thing. There's just something about her focus and her determination when it comes to love that is contagious. And I feel that for those who chose this pile. What does this mean? This means that it's helping you to get closer to your, your goal, whatever your goal looks like when it comes to your love and relationships, because other people are looking at you and focusing on you as you're focusing on love. And that's what's going to be bringing you guys close together. I'm also feeling like with self-acceptance, it's so true that if we're constantly working on ourselves, it feels like endless work. I want to tell you that if you're in union right now and your partner feels like they're not unconditionally loved or unconditionally supported, try to focus on the things that you do appreciate about them instead and accept them for who they are instead of trying to change them or change the relationship. 
Whoa, that was so crazy. This, I, you might need to listen to the rose quartz message because it just dove right off, which I don't even know how it would have done that. I'm going to put it here. That might be a sign for someone. Anyway, um, or maybe that's a sign too. Rose quartz is, is literally the crystal of unconditional love, softness, and compassion and kindness. Also, I do want you to know that for some of you guys, when it comes to your love and relationships, the way that you may feel about yourself and how hard or difficult you are with yourself may be getting projected into your relationships. So you might actually be enticing and magnetizing that energy within people around you where you're getting not the best or the softest versions of them because you're not necessarily giving it to yourself. So it's almost like shifting how it is what you focus on. With Eight of Cups, remember with your tarot, you had Eight of Cups, Five of Cups, Five of Pentacles, Two of Wands. It's what we choose to look at, but it's not really highlighting the, pot, the parts of us that are awesome or great or deserving to be unconditionally loved. It's highlighting the things that is that we feel like we need to change. And to stay in that space for too long will have a negative impact on your relationship, not only with others, but also with yourself. Okay. Wow. See, look at that. Then you have this card here, Rose, Love, and Sensuality. For some of you guys, you're really diving deeper into um, self-care, self-love, and taking better care of yourself first and foremost, and then it kind of bleeds out into your other relationships. Um, make that priority number one is what it is that I'm hearing. Let's go with the this deck here, which is Tarot of Sexual Magic. We have four of pentacles and we have the ten of pentacles. It's interesting because both of these cards are not going anywhere. This is the energy of, um, like, I'm, like, I'm just good right here. Even as you look at her, she's resting and she's being doted upon. Regardless of your union, I want to see you leaning into self-love, rest. I'm also hearing that a sign of maturity, wow, a sign of maturity is your ability to rest, your ability to relax, your ability to find ease and know that things are going to work out. Um, I don't know why spirit is saying that, but that's what they're saying here. I guess it makes sense when you think about like elders, they start to just change what it is that they focus on or what's a priority to them. They end up prioritizing their health, their peace, their ability to rest and sleep and to take things slow. I'm also feeling like I'm hearing the words like we're good where we're at right now. Like where we're at is kind of good. It's something to appreciate. It's something to celebrate what we've accomplished. So <clears throat> if you are in, in partnership right now, in a union, you, this person might want to celebrate um, their work, their effort, or where the, I don't want to say where the relationship is at right now, but they want to spend more time celebrating in the relationship, whether that be the small wins, everyday activities, maybe even expressing more gratitude. If there's larger accomplishments, this person really kind of, I don't want to say wants their ego stroked a little bit, but they want they might want some more reassurance and affirmations kind of spoken over them. And I think you, on the flip side, you might want this as well. Or it might be vice versa, where you need a little bit more reassurance. Um, it'll make it easier for you to, to have more self-acceptance in your own in your own in your own world, your own reality. And that's okay. That's okay. I was just saying this to a client uh, not last night or yesterday, but the day before that. Um, sometimes people wait until they fully love themselves in order to enter into a relationship. Does it make it easier when you do that? Yeah, when you're actually in the relationship. But a lot of people do find that they love themselves fully or they learn how to love themselves fu fully when they are being adequately loved and cherished. And that's okay too. That's okay too. Sometimes healing really does come that way or come from that space. 
what happens though is sometimes when we get so stuck in thinking like, oh my God, I have to fight for love, I have to show up for this, I have to prove, I have to work on myself, that that's when we end up separating ourselves from this loving energy because we forget that we are deserving of unconditional love just as we are right here, right now. That's the message that Spirit wants to give to you. Now with these cards here, let's go ahead and flip them over. I'm, I don't know why I'm nervous. Co-create with Spirit. Wow, this is pretty telling. It's kind of what it was I was feeling earlier. I feel like what the Queen of Swords, aka you, or the Queen of Swords in your life, this might be your partnership or your union, what you're believing and focusing on within yourself is exactly what is that you are going to get, what is it you're going to receive. Wow. Then you have White Raven Spirit, Trust in Magic. So we have both of these cards here. They're very opposite of each other. Wow. Do you see how they're even looking in different directions? Well, we have black and white. This is really telling to me. Some of you guys are walk, feel like you're going in two different directions in, in union, in your relationship. I want to tell you, like, that's okay, but I just don't know if it's going to stay that way forever. Wow. Hawk spirit. Let spirit be your guide. Yeah, I, I, am, I really am getting a sense of magic. Someone here is doing love work, magic, candle magic, fixed candles. Um, this, to me, is giving my fixed love and romance candle within the shop. Some of you guys, I want to say this, some of you guys might be trying to heal the connection, um, especially if you're focusing on reconciliation. It's interesting because I don't, I actually don't want to encourage a, like a fixed, like a deep waters fixed candle. That's one of the candles in my shop that works on healing any tumultuous energy. I'm actually seeing this as awakening um, love and sensuality, especially from the root chakra, because I feel like there's something here that is conflicted at the very base of your self-worth, your self-value, trust, safety, security, stability. These are things that I feel like might be energetically feel like they're under attack in this relationship or this union. So I don't know if this is hardships that are happening in your life that are making it difficult for you to invite love in or to feel safe, to feel supported. You guys might be going through financially difficult times. It, it is the season for that. I mean, Uranus through Taurus is sending everyone for a loop. Um, it's be in your best interest to conserve where it is that you can, you know, for now. Because the future is going to get a little more rockier with that. But either way, I am really seeing you enticing love in. Um, not in a bad way, but in a way that is... Like I said in the very beginning of the reading, it feels like if you're focusing, like what you focus on and the love and the relationship and the connection is what will magnify. So if you're only focusing on the negative and the things that you can't stand, you're going to definitely see more of that. It's going to be difficult. You're actually going to magnetize it. So Queen of Swords, let's focus on the positives as much as possible. Not to the point where we're neglecting um, when there's a problem, but I, I, I do see that there's hope here. Now, having said that, I do have this card here, Black Tourmaline. This is about um, protection. So I do wish to call in protection over your relationship as well as grounding. And especially when it comes to what is that you're focusing on here, try not to focus on the negative. I want to, in the extended, dive deeper into what is creating the blockage here in this connection and in, in this union. Where's the problem? Let's uncover it. And then we're going to go into solutions. And then we're going to find how they feel, this partner, where what's going on in their lives, how they're feeling within themselves. And uh, ultimately find a solution. I'm really big on that. So if I'm going to meet you in the extended, you will find it down below. For everyone else, thank you so much for hanging out with me, for allowing me to shuffle, pull cards, and to read for your energy. I do hope you're well. And if you're meeting me at any of the other piles, pile number two, number three, those are next. In the meantime, I want to invite you to subscribe and um, give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. And if you want any more deep dives, any exclusive readings beyond what we've done here today, Bahati Love Notes is a subscription service where that is provided for, okay? Until then, you guys, thank you so much, and I will see you in my next one. Moving on to pile number two, or if I'm meeting you in the extended, I'll see you Hello, there. my loves, and welcome to pile number two, or this crystal. 
as I said in the very beginning, we are going to be focusing on messages for your relationship, especially when it comes to marriage and partnership. Now, I have a new deck that I am working with. I do not remember the name of it, but I will link all of the decks that I'm working with tonight down below. In the meantime, though, um, I do want to say that this deck is very hard to shuffle. So if you could just send good energy to my hands right now, <laughs> I receive it. <laughs> I'll be okay. First world problems. But this deck, you know when you get a new deck and it's just so difficult to shuffle, that's my reality. All right, let's go ahead and dive into messages from your angels and your guides or even from your partner. I'm going to leave it open. What you need to hear know when it comes to union, your love, your relationship, your partnership, whether you're in a relationship now or you are moving towards the relationship with your partner. Whoa, did you see that? These cards are, do you see? They are ready to speak. Wow. It's so funny because as I was shuffling, I just heard the words entice me, but I almost heard it as a challenge, which is very interesting. Whoa, my goodness. And the first card to jump out is actually the moon card. Entice me is what I'm hearing. Six of cups. The High Priestess. I'm hearing, whoa, guys, this energy is a little weird. Um, not because of the Moon card or the High Priestess or even the Six of Cups. It's just the energy here feels like, I don't want to say a th like a threat, but um, someone challenging someone and looking them dead in their eyes like, and what are you going to do? So I don't know why this is the first thing that we're seeing right now but I'm going to go a little further. Wheel of Fortune. The Chariot card reversed. Yep, this is the you won't type of energy. Page of Wands reversed. Knight of Cups, yeah. Queen of Wands. The Empress. I want to tell you that this might be really hard for me to read for this group, but I'm going to do my best. The reason why I feel like it's going to be hard, I always like to give disclaimers um, just to be transparent always with where I'm at and where, you know, the reason why I feel like this is going to be hard is because I, I don't, I can't really relate to this, um, this type of energy. It almost feels like someone trying to provoke something but i i'm almost seeing like enticing or trying to pull something from out of someone whatever it is you're gonna get it but it, i don't know if it's necessarily what you want I'm, I don't know why I'm hearing like weaponizing, like weaponizing something that should not be a negative thing or shouldn't be something that's bad, but you, someone is turning it into something. Okay. It's, it's someone's turning it into something that it shouldn't be. I, going back in my like um, archives of my mem memory, I did hear about people like weaponizing tears, like starting to cry immediately when things go south and then it makes, it's almost manipulative, even though that person would be like, no, that's how I feel. It's my emotions. They cry, they can make themselves cry really fast or make themselves emotional in some way very fast. And it's to get, it's to either be a victim or to get some type of outcome out of the situation. I don't know if this is you or if this is someone else or how spirit sees the situation. You guys, I don't know. I, I Like I said, this is a very hard reading for me because it feels very, I can't relate. This might not even necessarily be you or your partner, but energies around you guys. I don't know, especially with the Queen of Wands here. 
Let me shuffle and pull on this because it, I'm... Like someone's... Ugh. Okay, now let's start here because I like... Ugh. Ugh. What is the moon card here in the Six of Cups? What 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 am I looking at here? I don't like this. Judgment card. The Magician. Mm -hmm. This is calling out someone's intention. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I'm not wrong. Sometimes I sometimes I second guess myself, but this is confirming I'm not wrong. Someone's intention is being called out here. It it feels malicious. This is someone who might come across as if they're innocent, but they're provoking a situation. They are. And when it comes to love and connection and union, spirit is calling it out. Who is the high priestess? There's an ulterior motive. Some oftentimes with the high priestess, we do think about someone who's working their magic, specifically a woman. But this could be this is spirit calling out the intentions of a Queen of Wands type of character. It feels like someone is doing something here on purpose. I hope that this isn't you, but I don't want to take that completely off of the table because I am reading for the collective. This could be a third party type of energy, the emperor. This might be someone that the emperor is currently dealing with. Who does the emperor represent in your life? Okay, so weird, but I'm also seeing this too as like social media, which is wild because I don't have the page of swords here. If anything, we have the knight of wands and the page of wands reversed, but I see this as posts or it's things that like a feminine energy or even an emperor will post in order to get a reaction. And then when you are like, of course, when it gets to you or when it gets to them and it's called out, they're like, what? I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is what I, I don't. Soon, I'm sorry. This is, I can't relate to this because as soon as someone that would ever does this, I already know you're not my person. Like, I don't deal with energy like this. I don't do things to ignite, uh, to incite a response. I'm someone who, if I don't like you, if I don't like what's going on, I'll talk to you about it. Or you'll know. That's, that's it. It's, it's not drama, but you'll know. There's no, like, passive aggressive <laughs> calling things out or lack thereof. So this is where I'm just like, I, I'm kind of struggling with this. Whoever is energy this is, that's kind of what they're doing. Um, I didn't. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to describe that. It's so weird. So, so weird. No, that me? Like, that I could never. Like, that's this energy that I'm getting. Mm. It's funny, too, because I'm looking at this Knight of Cups and... I'm watching them walk out the door and I'm just like, yeah, in this reading, I'm with them. Like I'm walking out the door too. I don't know. This is where you're just like, and no, chariot card reversed, page of wands. You're, this is where attraction kind of dips. This might be someone from the past kind of re-entering into your union. This could be, it's wild because the reading before you was, there's a lot of reconciliation this is something i think that is not you're not open to this this is like you are not going to come into my life with your same stuff this energy is interesting because even though these cards are upright they feel underdeveloped or uninvolved like unevolved like they're just they're choosing not to be solid i don't know so this Knight of Cups, I genuinely see this as you or someone else just being like, yeah, this is not, you haven't changed is kind of what it is that I'm hearing. And I almost want to follow this person into the next door that we're walking into of your reading. So let's go ahead and look into that. It's interesting. I, 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 I'll read for people, you know, all the time. But if I see energy like this, I, it's just so like a waste of energy. I don't know how to describe it. Like someone who shows up and, or a person who kind of does things for a reaction. And then when they get the reaction, they'll be like, oh my, they act like they're the victim. And then they start pointing fingers like, no, I would never, but they end up doing it. 
I, that is, I don't, I can't get behind that. To me, that's so weird. So weird. So, so weird. Like an inability to take account of, an inability to take accountability or they, they do things to get a reaction. I don't know why I just got a vision of like a vending machine. Like someone shaking a vending machine. I don't know if that's to talk about like what someone does. Someone here might be actually temperance card and the high priestess together. This is working magic. Or checking in with their intention. Meaning like whoever this person is that's bothering you. Because this is giving bothersome energy towards you. Also, um, the way that the birds are calling right now, that's always a sign of trouble. So this is another, another, another energy just kind of calling out the intentions of someone. And you also had the judgment card here. If you chose this reading, guys, some of you guys might be considering just moving forward and just being like, I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to protect my legacy. I'm going to protect my peace. I'm going to protect my abundance. That's okay. Like I'm hearing that's okay with me. That's what I want. That's what I need. Four of Wands here too is just like you know what I'm good. Uh, you I'm also getting this energy of like you guys can have this whatever this is you can have it. Not in a way that's like. It feels like if this is you, it feels like you're feeling like I can do better on my own or I can do better in this direction. I'm so sorry. Some of you guys are really. What does this have to do with marriage? Like, um, what is going on? Two of Pentacles showed up. Three of Wands. This is so that you can know what you're facing. I want to tell you that someone here, this might actually not be in the relationship, but there's a chance that this might be your work. And um, this energy, how it impacts relationship or love. Eight of Cups, Seven of Pentacles. Ace of Swords, Five of Wands. This is, okay, when it comes to relationship, marriage, union, Spirit is bringing this up because they want you to call out if this is something that is worth getting upset over but allowing it to upset. Actually, no, it's, it's funny because it's a love and love and romance reading, but your spirit guides are kind of calling it into question any type of outside influence. Is it worth, is it worth getting upset over? Is it worth in having it in? And the seven of pentacles and the eight of cups, both of these cards upright is you taking a step back and kind of assessing, is this something that I want to stay within or am I better to move without it? Hmm. It's weird because um, as I'm looking at these cards, I don't see a part like a you like the partner here. So okay, let's say this is you, your boyfriend or your partner, and there's a third party. It's interesting because it's almost like the partner is absent in all of this. Like, I don't know if they've exited or if they're not involved or if they're not making a move on it. So then it's you and this other thing, this other entity, this other third party, and you guys are battling it out. 
or there's an energetic uh, imbalance. I don't know how to describe this. So, because it's almost like the partner doesn't have a problem. So let's say this third party is your work. or like negativity or something in your work, this is where your angels and your guides are asking you when it comes to relationships and love, your partner is not negatively impacted by this as you are. It's kind of giving me the pile number one, but this is different because I, it's just different. There's this assessment. Let me ask, oh my God. See, I told you this would be hard. And maybe it's not that I'm off on this reading but that I um won't get satisfaction doing this 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 type of pool you know sometimes when you shuffle for certain people or just certain energies and you walk away from the reading you're like wow that was great <laughs> like I really helped them I feel like this is one of those readings that uh, even at the start of this at the start of this reading when I started shuffling I'm just like I just don't get this feeling that this is going to be a good pile for me to read on. Not that I should insert myself in your reading because that's not what I'm trying to do. But I, um, I won't get that feeling of like, ah, yes, you know, but hopefully you will. Actually, now that I'm saying this, no, 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 no. Let's look at your tarot. Come on. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tarot, 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 tarot. What the hell? Like what, what, what? Just what? What is the overarching message that you want to say for this relationship? And then we're going to look into your oracle. If I am going to do an extended on this, it's to dive into the third party. Page of Wands. The Devil card. Four of Wands. Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, there's something here, guys. Something tiny, little nuance, little, little something inserting itself into the dynamic four of wands of the relationship. And I just, to me, this is like a moth that eats away at your collection of vintage goods. Like that tiny little thing just does some major damage. I, if I'm going to do the extended, I'm going to look into what this devil energy is. I like, that's where we're going to go. I was not expecting that for this reading um, at all, but that's that's what I'm seeing. Let me ask for advice really quickly. Queen of Swords, yeah. That's kind of what I was feeling is like finding out what this is and then quickly going in to remove it. Eight of Wands. We're going to nip this in the bud. We're going to cut it out. Cross, cancel, delete. Burn it out. Get rid of it. Send it back. Send, return to sender. Banish it. If I was going to do a candle magic for this group, I would do the banish. The banish fix, fix candle. It's got to go. It's got to go. Like this is a clear cut. Mm, dead it. End it. And I don't necessarily see this as the relationship, like your partnership, unless your partner is the person who is feeding this third party to make it entice in. But I just heard the word backstab. Nope. I'm over it. Let's look at your oracle cards. Okay. First few cards here we have are strength and new beginnings. So that's kind of telling. Some of you guys might need to find the strength to start over. If this is, um, if this is, if you're in a relationship right now and you want marriage, you want union, you're gonna, I would ask if this is the person that's worth it to look for that with because it almost seems like they're in pulling you away or enticing you away from the four, the actual four of wands and the ten of pentacles. And if you stay in the situation, especially with Page of Wands, and you continue to allow this person that is not your person to pull you away from your person, 
then that's what you get is this endless cycle with this devil energy here versus a new start, a new beginning. And I just really think that that's actually kind of the overarching message here with this pile that if you are in, if you are looking for a union and you're kind of messing around with anybody who doesn't match, that doesn't have the potential for a strong future, 10 of pentacles here for marriage and union, this is not it. I would also even call into question if you're, considering marrying someone that you don't actually see yourself with. I just want to say that. Trust, divine timing, self-love. When it comes to new beginnings and divine timing, I really feel like you starting over a new cycle in your life, trust that. And in the meantime, focusing on self-love will help you get out of this chaos energy. Yeah, wow. Balance and stability. This is what spirit I feel like wants for you. But that's really hard to establish when there's this temptation and then this overindulgence energy that keeps showing up. I'm really interested to see what these next few key cards guys are. Ugh, tarot of sexual magic. Let's go. Queen of swords. Wow. Seven of Swords. Yep. The Devil card. I'm done. I'm done. I knew it. Ah. Damn it, man. <sighs> Guys, you have Devil, Devil, Double Devil. And Seven of Swords. I just... I don't want to do this, but in your extended, we can look into the devil card, the double, the double devil and the seven of swords. What is this freaking outside temptation? What is, maybe it, it might not even necessarily be a third. That's the, okay. No, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to continue to trust myself. What I saw and what I said at the very beginning is, and, and let me also say this too, who this person is doesn't feel like it's who you're meant to, who you're going to marry or who you're going to be with. It's what spirit is calling out now to help you to get to that point, not with this person, but in a new fresh start, like a new beginning, a new chapter, someone who is balanced, someone who is stable, someone who is worth it. This energy here doesn't feel like it. It actually feels like the partner that you might be focusing on right now is almost enticing in a third party or enticing in energy that doesn't need to be here that isn't going to be conducive to anything except chaos when you want and deserve longevity i'm also hearing that they're not being forward and that's unfortunately i think that's why too i even started off this reading being like this is going to be a difficult one for me to do because i am a solution oriented person i like i said i try to when i'm doing a reading i i look into the root of the situation. I heal that, start to water it, and then I give you the tools to create fertilizer so you can continue to grow what I've what 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 we've done during our time together. And this is one of those situations where I think it's best in your best interest, Queen of Swords, to be just like, what am I actually fucking looking at here? Pardon my French. Who or what am I looking at? And whatever that is, it might hurt me to walk out of this, but it's just this isn't it. So in the extended, I don't necessarily like, it's a Sunday too. And you know, I don't really like to indulge in energy that I feel is toxic or just like, ugh. but for the sake of you, you know what I mean? And just closure or understanding, we're going to have to dive into the devil card energy here in the extended. I'll link it down below. But for right now, let's go ahead and carry forward. Canary spirit, sing your own sweet song. It's so precious. Canaries are so sweet. Also, aren't they the ones to drop dead when there's like a carbon monoxide poisoning? Like they're the first ones to send a signal like, uh, nope, this is a problem. They just go like, uh, they just keel over like that. That's kind of what I'm seeing. If you were to carry a canary in the situation, would the canary be still alive right now? Or would it have already signaled like, oh, no, 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 no. There's something uh, n like noxious. There's something toxic in the air in this situation. Let it shine. Peacock spirit. 
Be Peace, Dove Spirit, and then Hummingbird Spirit, Be Here Now. So I am actually seeing that this is Spirit's way of showing you to maybe not look so far into the future in the situation, to see something for what it is here right now. Be very present in what it feels, hears, looks like. If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's not a chicken. You know what I mean? I think that's the right quote. And then we have, that's probably not the right quote. Then we have Oralite. I really want to read this to you to leave this with you before I go. Wow, guys. Wow, 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 wow. Literally just said this. Um, mindfulness meditation on the present. To be mindful. Actually, let me read to you the relationship part. Are you mindful of what is going on right now in your relationship? It's qualities and patterns. Or a light spirit wants you to observe what is working so you can build upon it and to see what is not working so you can begin to address it. Literally let it shine. Be fully present in your relationships today. Meditate and then as you interact with those you love, pay attention, observing without judgment, noticing what is happening without, a, without spinning a story of should and ought to be, ought to haves. Open your eyes. Open your eyes that you might deepen your loving connection for now. Your ability to be present and free of distractions is very strong. So spirit right away is asking you to open your eyes to see something here. And I'm just going to leave it at that. What that something is, is going to be in the extended. The extended will be linked down below. For right now, thank you for allowing me to pull on your energy and to help others who are in similar situations as you who also pulled this pile. The extended will be linked down below. In the meantime, if you found this helpful, I know that this message was a little difficult. It was difficult for me being totally transparent. Um, do give this video a thumbs up just for, you know, little gratitude uh, for the energy exchange. It definitely helps my YouTube channel. Uh, do subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. For those of you guys that are meeting me in pile number three, your message is coming or in the next ones. And for those of you guys that I'm meeting in the extended, I will link, I will meet you in the link down below. Until then, my loves, if you want more readings like this, where we dive deeper into energies, they're exclusive readings that don't go anywhere else on the internet. Bahati Love Notes is the subscription service for you. I think it's about 15 or $5 a month and there's a pouring of readings that come out very often. So you can find that there if that's something that you wish to treat yourself to. In the meantime, I'm sending you guys all of my love and I will see you in my next Hello, one. my loves. If you chose the Rose Quartz Crystal, this is your reading messages for your love, romance, marriage, partnership. This crystal did jump out, I believe in pile number one. So it might be a nod towards our future selves <laughs> to look back at that pile. Or maybe not. Maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe it was just a coincidence. So weird. I just got a vision of someone reading haunted stories or horror. It is Halloween time that I'm shuffling and pulling, so. Maybe that's something that you're indulging in. First things first, we have Five of Wands, Three of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Queen of Wands. I'm gonna clarify some of these cards though. Five of Wands, clarify the Five of Wands, please. Four of Swords. Six of Wands. Yeah. Okay, let me say this before I forget. Someone's really taking a break from success and like accomplishments. Or I'm also getting that someone here is, um, 
actually going to get a breakthrough after taking a break or taking a rest or things are working out to make it so that they can rest more. Something about that's going to be impacting the relationship. Clarify three of swords for me. Eight of wands. Page of cups. Ace of cups. When it comes to the three of swords, when it with, with, with your relationship and your partnership, I do want to bring up the fact that the three of swords is showing up, which is the card of disappointment and heartache and frustration. If there's heartache within this connection right now or within the relationship, it's coming from a space of you're asking for something, you're asking for more of something to be replenished or to be restored in your partnership, but it feels like something is always evaporating or it doesn't come through, it doesn't pull through. Knight of Pentacles and the Four of Wands, though, is the building towards the future. Now, wherever you're at in your relationship right now, this is to the next step. So let's say if you're dating, this is engagement is next along the lines and it looks realistic. If you're engaged, it's getting married and that's realistic. If it's getting married, it's celebrating the next anniversary or it, or it could be some type of accomplishment in the relationship that you guys are doing together. If you're dating, you could be moving in together. Um, if you're single, this is finding your person. If I'm also seeing that a layer to this, I feel like both parties are winning. I don't know why I'm hearing that and feeling that, but I feel like it's like you're entering into a good season in your life and so is your partner where things are evening out. I want to tell you that it doesn't, I don't know why with the Ace of Wands, like life isn't, I'm, I feel like telling you like life isn't perfect, but things are going to be better or things are shaping up to be better. The hangman here, yeah. There might be some things here, clarify hangman for me. There might be some things here that you're still kind of stuck on, higher font obligations to two of pentacles things that someone or both of you have to kind of tolerate or figure out or they're st not stuck with but they have to you know what it's kind of giving this is when you find your partner but they have a baby already and then there might be baby mama issue issues or like there's something that they are obligated to take care of and but somehow it's not perfect but somehow you guys make it happen like you make it work this has to do with a sense of duty and obligation that was an example that i get, gave but it's something that this person or you takes very serious like you wouldn't just walk away from this thing the both of you 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 would figure out how to make it work now clarify the queen of wands for me please two of wands the devil card reversed page of wands to me this is giving a feeling of empowerment you realizing like i don't Ness, I don't need to do anything I don't want to do. I don't need to tolerate anything I don't want to tolerate. I have options. I'm not seeing this as options in the relationship, like choosing other people or doing other things. I see this as a, a feeling of I'm empowered. Clarify the moon card though. Wow, that guy was really just riding by looking into my window. Um, four of pentacles. Yeah, I get this sense of, um, I get this sense of empowerment, even with the moon card here. It's understanding your unique needs, your unique cycles, your unique, like your uniqueness of the relationship, your unique needs your partner's needs, what you're asking for. For some of you guys, if this is um, dating in the near future, your partner, um, 
you might be using like the moon, like lunar cycles to work magic or to help things along. Even if you're in a relationship, it's I, I really get the strong sense of empowerment where you're like, I'm going to call into my existence through candle work, through lunar magic, through spells, through whatever, in order to help us make more choices or help me to have more choices. Like with the devil card reverse, you're just not powerless. You feel a sense of powerful and you might be tapping into your magic in order to help bring love or connection or abundance or security or beauty or ease or effortless. I also want to show you like, do you see how it went from like blue to like growth a little bit like greens and then purples and reds? It's like there's this energy of like mourning or lower, not lower, lower vibration, but like distractions and stuff that you have to tolerate and deal with to this feeling of like empowerment. This feels like a tremendous step forward um, for you. Wow. And then we have the death card here. Interesting. I almost want to talk about the accomplishment. Like, I don't know what the accomplishment is. It might be the goal of the relationship or the your goal for a relationship. They're they're almost talking about like the future. And like what's coming in or what's I can't shuffle these cards anymore. It's really, these cards are tough. They're, they're brand new. Um, so anytime you get a new deck, it's always like so hard on your hands, but I also split my hand open um, like two days ago when I was making green juice in the morning. I was cutting apples and my knife was just way too strong, like way too sharp. Anyway. Uh, what else is needed to know for this marriage? It just feels so hopeful. Like I, I really want to look into the future, and I think that's what the extend is, extended is going to be about. Six of Pentacles. Yeah, something is about to be gained here. Like hard work, effort, paying off, getting something in return. Something that you set your sights towards. Something that you were. Whoa, something that you might have manifested, asked for, talked to your partner about, talked to the universe about, and it materializes. And I just see this in small steps first, like baby steps first before. Yep, Nine of Cups, it's definitely coming in. Wow, Sun card, look at that, celebration, joy. This could also represent um, marriage, children, Five of Pentacles is here. This might be, clarify Five of Pentacles for me. I, I don't wanna. What, well, yeah, it's what you're striving towards, what you're working towards, what you've set your sights for. I, I can't make this up. It's what you've been what working out of, you know? It's like someone who says, I want more for us, I want more for this, and then they start working towards it. It's very practical and it's working. Is I that's how that's how I see it. Anything else that you want to talk about? Judgment card. Okay, clarify that for me, please. Ooh. Ten of Pentacles. Wow. This has a lot to do with legacy, money, resources, finances. Both you and your partner here are probably working on your future. Page of Swords, Ten of Cups. It's like you're coming up with a plan for greater happiness for, <clears throat> for both of you. Wow, Ten of Swords. You have literally oh, every single Ten of Cup here. Ten of Cups, Ten of Swords, Ten of Pentacles. What are we missing? Ten of Wands, wow being over exhausted, overburdened. I honestly feel like that's what's going to stop. If remember how we're saying like someone just feels like they're putting like 
like putting in a lot of effort or work, maybe not so much in the relationship because I feel like that's going to pay off, but maybe in outside of the relationship, in your work, and I feel like something's going to come through like success here. Wow, guys, three of wands. Yep, something's coming through finally. Seven of pentacles, something that this person has been looking towards, even maybe lo losing hope for a king of wands, feeling powerless within. These two cards were, <laughs> excuse me, these two cards were reversed. I don't know if you can see this, but the King of Wands seems to be the same person who is sitting back behind the abacus here. So it's almost like they were trying to come up with a plan, but I feel like in the past, their plan wasn't working. And look at this, we have the Ace of Pentacles here too. This has to do with investments. So it's not that they are lacking in ambition. It's not that um they're not trying it's or that there was an opportunity i think it's timing or something that they thought you or they you didn't see you're like is this ever gonna happen somehow it happens it comes in it's here it's you can put your hands on it it's tangible and i don't see this as one thing i see this as a multi like a bunch of different things i, I don't see the wheel of fortune card here but it's almost like hitting the jackpot with that though, it's not that you have good luck. It's just that all the work and the effort starts to pay off in all these different, in different ways. And it's actually making life easier and not harder, especially with the absence of 10 of wands. And with that, I teach this in the Sacred Circle Tarot School, which it's not just the cards that show up. It's also the cards that don't show up. And the 10 of wands is the one that's most telling the fact that it didn't show up. And I love that for you. And I love that for this reading because I feel like you know, it, it, it's a lot of work and effort, but just maybe not seeing that the immediate results or the immediate reward of that. Um, and it doesn't feel like an internal problem. It feels like an external problem, but it might have been stressing you guys out in the relationship. Um, this is also not just for those that are in relationships, but those who are uh, attracting relationship and partnership. It's almost like you you put in you start writing the petitions. You're you're asking the universe. You're doing the internal work, but then you don't necessarily see that partner, the person that you would want, that you could see yourself living the rest of your life with. And at this, at least in the eyes of the tarot, they're like it's about to come through, and not just this thing, but like a lot of things in your life, especially career. Wow, transcending. Literally, I said that. Transcending. You, it felt like your cards were just pulling up. Like they're just pulling up into a higher place or like things are picking up. I love the grace card here too. Because I feel like this is the universe's grace for you or the grace that is that you give to your partnership, your relationship. It's just natural and effortless that you give to each other. Or it's going to be a key, um, like a, a key thing that you can expect from the relationship is that you can always like look out for each other. Next thing we have here, we have body. Show me divine how to love and fully care for this body. Please give me the radiant miracle for of accepting my body as it is. Then we have true love. Mm -hmm. Your wholeness and safety lie within, not from a partner, but this sovereignty actually leads to the deepest intimacy for you to stop using others. Let me stand on my own feet, dear Lord, and know true love. Clarity. Let me trust my deepest instincts in all ways, especially when matters are unclear. May my own unholy intuition always guide the way. So this, I just feel like you're able to really lean into true love here to enjoy it, to receive it. But I also feel like clarity in the future and where it is that we're going. And I also think about like abundance to help you to continue to take care of yourself and how important that is for your needs to be met, especially financially, even in the partnership. And I know that we're talking about love here and love is important, but I also think quality of life is showing up for you as well because you had the 10 of pentacles, you had the 10 of cups and you had... The Ten of Swords, it's like the ending of the difficult, the, the rock bottom, but not necessarily rock bottom. Some of you, yeah, maybe, but for the most part, it's like now from here we build up. Now from here we're transcending. Now from here we're moving forward. We have Ace of Wands, Five of Cups, Ten of Wands, there, sh there it is, Four of Wands reversed, the Three of Wands reversed. I'm also smelling coffee right now. 
um, it's in my subconscious, not in my world around me. So some of you guys might have been trying really hard to find ambition and motivation to move forward, especially with the Knight of Wands. Just really like this masculine energy here is trying to fulfill the promise and Ten of Wands is signifying that. This is what they've been trying so hard to kind of do to accomplish. And I feel like I'm hearing that they're doing it for us. The problem is, is that they felt like, I think this is work or something. They felt like it was never gonna come in. Um, and that they, it made them un, not unsure of the relationship or the future of the relationship, but of the future in general and of themselves. They needed some, some sense of recognition. If you are single, this is, you're kind of like losing up hope on the effort that you put out, the candles that you lit, the petitions that you wrote, the prayers that you've, you've, you've uttered, that you've whispered. You started losing hope in this. And like, you know, it's, this is never going to happen. I'm never going to find my person or this will never work out. And it's reflecting that energy and that effort. But I feel like you're going to start seeing things moving forward. I really am getting a strong sense. There's a lot of hope here. Yeah, vulnerability, stinking, stinking cedar, vulnerability, and threat. So this to me is highlighting the Ten of Swords energy that we were seeing and also the Ten of, Ten of Wands. I just feel like with cedar, it's always for me a card of like strength and longevity and also magic. And I feel like this is promising that there, not that there was a threat to the relationship, but a threat to quality of life and going when someone feels like their quality of life could be better, they work endlessly towards developing that and it ends up exhausting them. Um, but I feel like this person, this relationship or even you to yourself, you want to give yourself everything. You feel like you're deserving of everything and or of nice things or just a whole happy life like it's not maybe it's not just nice things but just a quality life however you see it whatever your goals are and i feel like this person or you you're working so hard to to it but it felt like it wasn't going to come or there are actual threats to your peace of mind or your well-being and i just honestly feel like that's the rock bottom that that is where you're coming from or that's where your partner's coming from and then from that place you're building up from that from that and beautiful because you're doing it together. We have turkey spirit, give with gratitude and grace. So again, this is highlighting quality of life for me too as well. Cow spirit, the miracles are endless. And then wombat spirit, be at home. So there's a lot of energies here. I don't know if you guys are seeing this, but there's a lot of energies here about comfort, quality of life, stability, but also longevity and being comfortable. And I feel like this is what you and your partner are both working towards. Or the universe is helping you guys work towards this together. Getting into a place where your quality of life is just superior. And I don't mean that by like surrounded by luxury goods. You could literally be like you're living in a cabin in the woods, but it's like your place, it's your home. You guys make it work. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, but you figured it out. You figured it out enough. The card here you have here is fluorite. Let's go ahead and read this crystal. Oh my God. It opened right to it. Unbelievable. Okay. Wow. Clarity and purity, which that card did come up here. Clarity, clarity and purity, clear focus, and an end to cluttered thinking. So this is the other thing too, I'm, I'm thinking like in this relationship, if you guys are coming out of a time of like endless struggle, maybe not necessarily in the relationship, but external things that might even impact your relationship or your union or your life or your ability to feel safe and supported in a relationship, this is gonna end and in the best way possible and there's gonna be some new beginning here. It's coming up out of the ashes and into something new. When the way forth is clear, a sense of purpose and enthusiasm arise, arises and the fog of distraction lifts. Fluorite spirit appears when confusion is about to disperse, giving way to pure wisdom and free, unambiguous intentions. It reminds you that you can achieve clarity by slowing down and consciously choosing to release any confusion or distractions. Like a still pool reflecting the beauty of the sky, a calm state of mind can produce the clarity you seek, allowing your intentions to be pure. 
Obstacles to co-creating may slip away as you work with fluorite to magnify all that is pure, good, and loving within you. Focus on that and it will be amplified. Let me read to you this romance, the relationship message too. In fairy tales, true love at its purest is often the magic that will break the old spell keeping someone asleep, frozen, or acting out of alignment with who they are deep down. True love from the conscious universe always works like a magic potion, allowing you to let go of false stories about who you are and what you can create and experience. It breaks you out of the debilitating belief that you are not worthy of all that you desire. You have been frozen too long, and as you experience the purity of love pouring into you from the conscious universe, you will move you will more easily leave behind the patterns that keep you from the relationship you are entitled to enjoy. You deserve to have all that you long for and more. So work with fluorite to purify your attention. It is here to help you experience your connection to the pure love of the universe that will strengthen you. Exactly. So this is what I'm saying. It's like this quality of life and what it is that you are, you and your partner are ready to share together this life that is that you're ready to share. For many of you guys, you've been actively working so hard on building that life for yourself. At least what it is that I can see here, it's gonna happen. It is going to happen, it is happening. Having said that, that's actually going to be my focus for your extended, is this newness, this new life, this new blessing, what is to come. I do get a sense that this has a lot to do with finances and job and your career. But to be honest with you, I think it goes a little bit deeper than that. And it's just like tangible things that you are co-creating, like taking a thought or an idea or a goal or a vision and manifesting it into a material form. So we are going to be looking into what that material thing is, what that physical thing is that you could put your hands on. Could it be financial resources in abundance or a house? Yes, but there's so many other things and we're gonna be diving into that in the extended. For those of you guys that are not joining me in the extended, I just wanna thank you for allowing me to shuffle and read your energy for you and those who are similar to you. Please give this video a thumbs up because it's a wonderful way to pour back into my YouTube channel. And it'll also send a signal to YouTube platform that this YouTube channel is worth promoting a little bit more than it already is or isn't. Um, I do want to say that if you are open to subscribing, it is there. <laughs> I would love to expand the Bahati vibe tribe a little more. The shop is opening. The apothecary is opening November 11th. If I was going to choose anything for you in this reading, I would definitely do the money and abundance oil or the fixed money candle. Why? Because I'm seeing material things manifesting for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be connected to material goods like money or coins or things that you can buy or purchase like homes or anything like that. It is just honestly, it could be things that are just um, that we can enjoy, savor, find predictable like abundance in that way. So that candle will be open for you and available at that point, at that time. For those of you guys that are meeting me in the extended, let's go ahead and head there. And for the rest of you guys, I just want to send you all of my love. If you want any more readings like this, Bahati Love Notes is a subscription service. It is exclusive readings, not put anywhere else on the world. It's in our little bubble, our little hub. I'll link that down below. It's a $5 or $15 membership cost but again it's all it's access to all of those hidden readings that again you can't find anywhere else and i'm i'm oftentimes shuffling and pulling for them throughout the week until then you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me and everyone else i'll see you down in the extended